I'm Shani Danda, and if I look a bit stressed, it's because I'm gearing up for the launch of my new business. Now, I've spoken on stages at conferences alongside the likes of Michelle Obama and Hillary Clinton. But there's nothing as nerve-wracking as taking the plunge into the world of business. People might think this is a niche market, but I've researched the stats and I think it's going to be a success. Can you tell us why you chose to go to Dyson, the manufacturer, as your first point of call when the straightness first broke? Because I honestly believed after six months um, with the guarantee um, kicking in, that Curry's would just tell me to contact Dyson. Did your husband pay for the straighteners on a credit card? We did, yes. Well, that's brilliant because when you do pay for uh, a big ticket item over the value of £100 on a credit card, then you are protected by something called Section 75. Is it enough? It's not, and it's actually an insult because life costs more when you're disabled. On average, £583 a month. So some disabled people were already in our own cost of living crisis, and now we're in another one with our energy bills. And there's a big, strong link between poverty and disability. Four out of ten families that relied on disability benefits before the energy crisis were already in poverty. What's £150 going to really do? It's not our conditions and impairments that disable us. Mm -hmm. It's the society that we live in, mm -hmm. you know, the inaccessible world, transport, places that we live and work in, but also the decision makers that, that design spaces, that choose to hire people. It, there's so much bias and prejudice in the way in which we think. Essentially, it's ableism. I have to figure out how I'm going to reach my kitchen cupboards. You know, when I go into a shop and want to buy clothes, I can't just wear them off the rail. Every single bit of my life has to be planned um, and designed in a way that's accessible to me. So, yeah, if we think about that and how that translates into skills, disabled people are so resilient, resourceful. We're amazing mm. problem solvers because it's how we have to navigate the world that we live in. There are one million disabled people that can and want to work, but unfortunately aren't given the opportunities. And have you personally faced hurdles to getting work that able-bodied people wouldn't face? Absolutely. At the age of 16, I had to apply for over 100 jobs and I didn't even get an interview before I removed any mention of my condition. So I have a short stature, I'm three foot ten in height, that's about the height of a four-year-old. So as you can imagine, it's very difficult for me mm. to go into a shop and buy and wear clothes straight off the rail. There are so many things that I need to consider, but what ends up happening is I buy something, pay money to cut half of it off. Uh -huh. uh, so yeah, <laughs> this would be life-changing for me, absolutely. Yeah. I like to think my clothes are a bit of an extension of my personality. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I'm really into, you know, looking good because that makes me feel confident in all of the things that I do as well. Yeah. Um, so for me, oh, when, I, when I read this, I was like, yes, I'll be first in the queue. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, it's great to be back. So you were in the EastEnders last week. Yeah, yeah. And it was an absolute dream of mine. I grew up watching EastEnders from a very young age. So the fact that I was in it and on Albert Square is just so surreal, but it was an amazing experience. Well, it's a great location. I'm sure we can find you a buyer. I can get all the paperwork over to you on Monday. It needs to be today. Okay, I'll just get some exterior shots. Make it quick, yeah? 